I'm having a lot of problems, man. My head hurts. I'm I'm sniffling. I'm not sick or anything. It's just allergies, which I you know I've had forever, and I get headaches like every day. So I've had a headache every day of my life for like four years. So people are in chat. He's sick. He's got coronavirus. Now I just I'm like just have a lot of problems. But um, so I I don't know what's going on here. I'll just watch this video and you know maybe that'll fill in some of the blanks and I'll react to it. And we'll see. Welcome back to another episode of iDubs Complains. This is a very special episode where I get to tackle two topics that I've recently become very passionate about. That is a section of my audience who thinks they know me and my opinion on sex work. You can sort of see where these two will collide. For those of you who are unaware of the drama I recently brought upon myself, I'll fill you in. My girlfriend... First of all, I, I don't... I don't know anything about iDubs. I know he's like friends with PewDiePie, but what's going on with his look, man? I just don't get it. Why don't people dress like adults? You know what I mean? Like, this guy, what he looks like he's, what, in his late 20s or 30s or something? How old is iDubs? He's 30? Oh, well, he's 29. And, like, who who wears a shirt like this? I would never wear a shirt like that. The beanie thing. Maybe he's, like, balding. I don't know. But right out, right out of the gate, I don't like the physiognomy. I don't like the I don't like the outfit. Not loving the look there. But let's let's go on here. You got to dress your age. Yeah, somebody says in chat, you got to dress your age. And even like this, I mean, this, I'm not dressing, like, formally here. But, you know, this is like a, what do you call this, like a flannel shirt? And this is more of like an adult look. This is like a Hollister look. This is like American Eagle. This is like somebody went to, uh, what's that store, like Aeropostale or something. Like that's just not, I don't know why a 30-year-old man would be dressed like, like a hipster goof like that. Anyway. And also clean your room. What's going on? We got peanuts. We got a pop bottle we got some kind of a wrapper some wrappers here like the drama i recently brought upon myself i'll fill you in my girlfriend started an OnlyFans account which is a website where you can upload amateur porn anything from double penetration all the way over to lewd cosplay and everything in between and uh, i think all of it is cool yeah i know i I didn't think it would be a controversial opinion either. A good amount of people are just doing the reasonable thing and just making jokes and laughing about it. But there's a whole nother group of people who feel personally devastated and betrayed. You lied to us. First of all, I'm not your fucking dad. Like, if you don't want to look up to me anymore, that's fine. I don't want you to look up to me. First up, we got Edward. He probably got told by a lot of people that he looks like iDubs. And he really liked that because iDubs was cool. But now that iDubs is a simp, now he's gonna go in full baby wah-wah mode. No, shut the fuck up, you dumb fuck. You don't get to ha-ha funny yourself out of this one. You're a simp. You act all edgy and cool on YouTube and then go and film your girlfriend shoving anal beads up her ass for OnlyFans afterwards? Fuck you. You lied to everyone. You ruined my life. Oh, looks like I did something a little too edgy. Ha! <laughs> Cope. Dude, that was totally based, that tweet. I can tell that this whole video is going to be a cope. This whole... I saw this all the time when I, when I was in high school. And I guess this is just human behavior, by the way. You know, not necessarily high school, but... This whole, like... Oh, you're disappointed in me? Well, I don't care. Well, that's like the worst. I hate people like that. I hate hearing that attitude. And, you know, I'm a jokester and I'm funny and whatever. But uh, it's just like a pathetic mentality, you know. Oh, I'm not your old mom anymore? Well, I'm not your dad. I don't even care. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't care. Oh, uh, I guess I'm too edgy. Like, no, you're not edgy, dude. You're fucking gross. That's gross. 
It's not edgy. It's not controversial. It's wrong. <laughs> you know? And it's uh, pathetic from a man point of view. It's like bad from a religious and a moral point of view. But it's also pathetic from a secular point of view, right? It's got nothing to do with being edgy. But anyway. Edward, I don't know where you got the idea that I was cool. Do you think it was cool when I, w when I was playing with anal beads? It's cool when I play with anal beads. Do you think it was cool when I was running around in an oversized cop outfit? That was cool to you. It's because he's a I also hypocrite. don't like that either. It's like, oh, I never said I was cool. It's like, I remember when I was beefing with those heel turn guys. It was so funny. It was the exact same response. Do you remember the heel turn network? That was Richard Spencer and uh, a bunch of losers. I don't even know. I don't even remember their names anymore. But Richard Spencer used to do a show on this channel on YouTube called the Heel Turn Network. And he did it with a bunch of, like, Wignat streamers. And um, they, we were feuding for a while because they – well, it wasn't really a feud. It was like I was doing my show, and they, they would, like, talk about me all the time. And I remember somebody asked me about them, and I said, like, everything that they do is derivative. I said, like, the fash wave aesthetic, you know, the um, – pink and purple color scheme, the Roman statues, the the Tron grid. The fash wave thing is so played out and stale. I said they're like a combination of TRS and like, you know, pole from 2015. And um and that was just true. I mean, that was just true and everybody saw it and it was just unoriginal garbage. And I remember their response to that the next day on their show. They were like, well, Nick is saying, the only thing Nick is saying about us is that we're unoriginal, but like we never claimed to be original. So, and that was like their big own. And I, I just, I don't know. I hate that mentality. I hate that. There's one thing to be self-deprecating. There's one thing to be like not taking yourself too seriously, making a joke at your own expense, but... I mean, this guy's legitimately doing something sad and pathetic, and people are calling him sad and pathetic. And he's like, well, I never said I wasn't a pathetic loser. I know. Oh, oh, uh, oh, I was cool when I was doing other gay shit. I was cool when I was, you know, what doing this other stupid stuff. Oh, I'm not cool, and I'm not a role model. Like, then what the fuck are you doing then? You know, I don't know why people think it's cool to not care. Well, I guess I know why. But I hate people that are like that. There's a lot of young people, that's just how their brain works. They think that the less you care and the the more that you play up this like inferiority, self-hating thing, like the cooler you are. Oh, I just don't care about anything. Man. I'm just like a piece of shit. I don't care about anything. It's like, then why don't you just die? You know, and I'm not, not like I'm endorsing anybody to die, but it's like, what what has happened to... What has happened to society? But it's just I hate that mentality. So I don't I don't like that. I don't like that at all. He makes content comp and targets people, but he himself have girlfriend whoring herself, and he does nothing about it. What am I gonna do? You think I should just like take a shotgun to her head? No, bitch. It's time to die now. No, items. You should break up with her. But I'm cool with it. You do realize there are guys out there in private right now jacking off to your girlfriend. But I guess it's out of sight, out of mind. It's not a problem. You think these fucking retards would actually? There's like, there's like that same mentality. What am I gonna do about it? Well, do you understand how this is all just a big cope? That's what the whole video has been so far. You're not a role model. Uh, I never said I was. I'm not your dad. You're not cool. I, you're right. I never was cool. <laughs> Uh, you know, well, and even if I had a problem with it, what am I going to do, kill her? Like, no, but be a man, you know? Be a man. Being a man means bossing your girlfriend around. Sorry, but that's what girls like, and that's the natural order of things. That's what girls like. That's what girls expect. That's what's natural. That's the only way, as far as I'm concerned, to have a functional relationship is if the man is in charge. Or rather, if the man is leading, you understand, doesn't have to be, well, you know, that that's how it's going to be in my household. But there has to be a leader. Somebody has to have primacy. And it is by natural law and, and actually by everyone else's expectations, the man. So, you know, this, well, what am I going to do? Well, what does that mean? Does that mean that if your girlfriend was doing something that you didn't like, you know, that you would just take it? What kind of man are you? 
What what if you did have a problem with it? Well, what am I going to do? Break up with her. And, it, you know, if you can't get her to stop, then break up with her. Never go out with her in the first place, right? Well, what am I going to do? Well, you got a lot of options, man. That sounds like, you know, that sounds like a you problem. That sounds like you're not a man problem. So this whole video is just... When people do this stuff, it's just sad. I mean, it's one thing... Th this is almost the worst way to do something... It's one thing to double down. It's one thing to apologize and change course. But this is maybe the worst thing that you could possibly do, to, to try and go out there and, and act totally not mad. I'm doing a complaint video, and I'm not mad, and uh, I'm a big fucking loser. Like, that's almost the worst response you can imagine. It would almost be more Chad if he just didn't address it and was like, yeah, so what, you know? Not like that would be. It wouldn't be Chad to have a girlfriend that's on OnlyFans, but at least you know then in that case that he internally is, you know, confident in his convictions. This is not a confident, this is very insecure, very weak, and you can tell. Okay, let's go on, though. Do a smidgen of research, because, like, I did it, and I found the potential hypocrisies in, in what I say in the past, and it's, it's pretty fucking consistent. The funding for the slut shirt is actually very, very low. Skanktown. Skanktown, USA. Softcore porn all over the walls. Pretty nice, huh? You know, like, I'm not saying that women should be sexualized or shouldn't be. I'm just saying that there is the market for it, so it makes sense that they would do it. I would say skank and slut, but never was that part of my argument. It's just flavor. It's just flavor. Like, in the future, I'll probably say slut and skank again. I don't know why everyone thinks that, like, I, I made a, a stand. I stood on top of a hill, and I proclaimed to all my uh, loyal Christian followers, no porn shall ever cross my screen. No woman that I date shall ever lower her standards to the point of being half-naked. Let me have my hope, all right? I want to believe he's too intelligent for this. Intelligence has nothing to do with it, but I will say this. If you want to retain hope that I'm intelligent, uh, this is the most intelligent thing I've probably ever done, is, is revealing this side of me. That I'm okay with sex workers and girls being slutty. It has no bearing on my life whatsoever. And the sooner you realize that for yourself, the better. I wanted to talk more about all the shitty takes that people have, and this guy that we're gonna watch has pretty much listed all of what the arguments are for people who don't morally agree with the situation. So on the cons, we have everyone can see what he sees for a few dollars. What exactly do you think I'm seeing? Do you think she's shooting fireworks out of her pussy? Do you think she's screening the Matrix Reloaded down there? It's not a mystery, it's a pussy, dude. And then there's no special pussy. It doesn't become less valuable the more people see it. If that's the case, my body and my person is the most valueless thing on the planet. The internet is a forever archive, so okay. there's no- Yeah, that's just like, how can you not, but that's, that's just the way things are now, I guess, is that everybody's just a piece of meat, right? Everybody's just a piece of meat and, <clears throat> Well, what it comes down to is the, uh, you understand what pornography and, and all of it comes down to is, is just the denial of dignity. It's, it's undignified, right? To be, what is the first thing that Adam and Eve did uh, when they got out of the Garden of Eden? They covered themselves up, right? That was the first thing that humans, that human beings did before they did anything else. Before they had sex, before they ate, before they did anything on earth. They covered themselves up because they experienced shame. Because we understand intuitively, instinctually, that to be naked, it, this is a private thing. You know, that our, that our private parts are private. And particularly in the confines of marriage, they are, that is something that is, right, like for your partner, especially in a sexual capacity, or your uh, your husband or your wife, I should say, with you know, partners, kind of like one of these New World Order Jewish terms, you know, your partner. Um, but it's, it fundamentally comes down to dignity. You know, how could you take anybody seriously? What do you think of a person if you could just look them up and find them naked online? You know, how, you know, I think about like going to a store or getting your hair cut or going to the, you know, 
going to the doctor or your neighbor or your your uh you know your kids parents at school or something like that imagine if you could just go and find them naked and see them doing nasty bedroom things i mean it's just indecent and undignified so oh well because more people can see her then it becomes worth less like yeah yeah that's actually the definition of scarcity right the definition of scarcity is the less there is of something the more valuable it is right and that's why marriage, monogamy, is such a beautiful thing. Because in a monogamous society, what you have is that each person only belongs to one other person. Isn't that a great thing? That if you're a man, you get to go home to a wife that's yours. And vice versa, if you're a girl, you get to go home to a husband who's yours. And they're looking out for you, and it's a team. And you don't have to worry about somebody else coveting them or somebody else getting things from them or whatever right so so that's maybe the whole problem is uh and and this is the problem with you know polyamory and feminism and all this stuff which is the denial of the inherent sort of ownership of marriage you know feminists use that like it's a bad thing like oh marriage is patriarchal because men think they own their wives and it's like well <laughs> yeah not not in a way like like chattel slavery you know what i mean not like oh you like your wife is uh a non-human servant or something but there is a degree of you know you're you're in this union and you count on her and she counts on you right and there is a degree of of ownership in that that's your wife that's your husband right and so to me that is what we have with feminism and with polyamory all this stuff is a denial of that and, and this is where you get this is where you get cucks and simps and all this kind of stuff this is where you get people that are not men because they don't actually have women, right? They're just uh, sort of passing through. They're they're like, uh, you know, it's like on the Monopoly board when you land on the jail space and you're just passing through. So, I mean, that's maybe the most important one, right? But we'll go on here. Whoops. Uh, Probably uh, better watch delete all button. Anyway. That's not quite there. I don't know why this shitty point is being made. Uh, it's sort of like from 2003... By the way, the internet, it's Current a forever year. archive. Didn't know if you knew, but uh, when you upload something, it might stick around. This isn't done impulsively. Like, wh what do you think? Someone's just going to make an OnlyFans just on a whim? Didn't give it any thought. Just thought maybe I'll sell my pussy online and see how it goes. And then future... Yeah, uh, yeah, that happens all the time. That's literally what it's there for. Do you think that if OnlyFans didn't exist, that half the people on there would become professional porn stars? Do you think they would go to the, whatever, the porn studio or the porn company and say, uh, yeah, I'd like to do pornography on the side. I'd like to make... Of course that wouldn't happen. Of course that wouldn't happen. The whole point of OnlyFans is to... It's an amateur pornography site. It's so that... And it's, it's marketed towards and targeted towards vulnerable young people who are financially struggling and it's and that is how they make the pitch is it's no big deal it's just on a whim why do you think it's a paywall the whole point of the paywall is so that well it's only people on here are going to see only fans only fans who are paying are going to see it do you think people just make these on a whim who do you think they're marketing this towards at least as far as the the so-called content creators go it's young girls yeah, I can't imagine an 18-year-old girl making an impulsive decision posting a lewd picture of herself on OnlyFans. I'm sure everyone on that website made a very judicious decision about whether they want to reveal themselves permanently on the Internet for all time and become now and forever a porn star. I, I don't think that's happening. I don't think young people are making those decisions. Uh, you know, or they're, they're not making these judicious, well thought, well, I've, people put a lot of, he's saying it sarcastically, like it's no brainer. No, of course people do that. And these satanic new services are literally designed to do that. You know, and that, that is maybe the most defensive thing I've heard so far. The whole point of pornography is, is to trap you. That's the whole point of it, to watch it and to participate in it. Nobody in this day and age, m at least if you're consuming pornography, makes a willful, calculated, deliberate decision to participate in pornography. Young men don't start watching it that way, 
and young girls don't participate in it that way. Let's get that straight before anything else. The whole idea of pornography, number one, is satanic. Flesh, lust, all this kind of stuff is a sin, and that is the devil. That is the devil acting through these these uh, different services and studios and so on. And that is what they thrive on, is luring unsuspecting young people into consuming or creating pornography. Before it was just the consumption. You know, look at the ubiquity of internet porn. It's in pop-up ads. You go to the wrong website and pornography shows up. It's in your emails. It's in, right, if you go to your spam folder. And it's so easy to find in anywhere. Look up, you know, just take a pick at certain keywords and you're going to stumble upon it. it. Happened to me. I'm sure it happened to everybody when you're 12, 13, 14 years old. You don't even have to try very hard to, to stumble upon it. And that is what they rely on. They get the hooks on you as a consumer for young men. And this is what happens with women. Before, at least you had this barrier of if you wanted to do porn, it's like, well, you got to go to a studio. And before the Internet, it's like, well, it's got to be DVDs. I don't, I don't know exactly how it worked. I'm not an expert on pornography. But, you know, there was a little bit of a barrier to entry there where, you know, only people that are really willing to make that plunge are going to go in. But even in that case, they're still preying on young, vulnerable, financially stressed out young people to do pornography. But with something like OnlyFans, now more than ever, it's it's easier, it's more accessible. They play it down. Everybody's doing it. I see it all the time on Twitter, on Instagram. You see it everywhere. And it was designed to do that. And so the idea that you know, pornography is something that everybody's taking really seriously and making calculated, smart decisions about is just like, that's that's the the inverse. That's the opposite of what's happening. To you. Oh, she definitely, what did he say? What a fucking idiot. Making OnlyFans just on a whim. Yeah. Didn't give it any thought. Just thought maybe I'll sell my pussy online and see how yeah. it goes. Yeah, Man. that happens. That happens all the time. That's exactly what people do. People want a little bit of extra money. And they get desperate. They prey on desperation. You know, a young girl. And it's not, it's honest, you know, probably guys too. And they say, you know, if you're a, a young girl and you want to make a little extra cash because you want a phone or you want, you know, makeup or what clothes, whatever, whatever women want. All you have to do, no effort, right? Make money, don't work. What's easier than taking a naked picture of yourself? You know, you're, you're selling your body. You're selling your body as an asset. You're a prostitute. Yeah, of course people sell that on a whim. Do you think young women are thinking, well, this is a really big decision. I don't know. I mean, what about my future? And is that something I'm comfortable with? Or do you think that the desperation gets to some people and they say, yep, uh, well, I'm ready for my $50 now. I'm, I finally did it. I finally did it. Here's a link. So, yeah, that happens all the time. Um, but anyway, well, we got to move on. I made the point. In future jobs, they might be Satanic. a little bit harder to come by. I think this is one of the most important opinions to highlight because it really demonstrates a severe lack of real world experience when you're saying that future jobs are going to be harder to come by because of an OnlyFans account. Like if you think this affects your standing or your social credibility in getting jobs, you are so sadly mistaken. And I will also say, if you want a morally grandstand, one of the shittiest things... Well, wait, wait. Before we get onto that, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What's even the argument there? He's just... <laughs> well, if you think it's going to affect jobs, you don't have any life experience because that's not true. Of course it's true. Try being a professional. Try, try being at anything. It, you know, unless you're working construction or if you're working retail or food service, try working any serious job and have something floating out there on the Internet, whether that be a, uh, a racial slur, a politically incorrect opinion, a nude photograph or some kind of embarrassing thing, right? The idea that that doesn't affect your job prospects is just retarded. All you have to do, make one enemy, they find that, game over. Or your boss just finds it. I mean, this is just common sense. And, I'll, you know, obviously that hasn't happened to me or most of the people in this sphere. Usually with us, it's the political stuff, right? 
usually when people are telling me about job prospects, it's not about OnlyFans. It's about, you know, well, you're, you're going to regret saying retard or fag or, you know, whatever. You're going to regret saying this political opinion. And, of course, all of that matters. All of that matters, especially if you're in a competitive field or a professional serious field. Of course that stuff comes back to bite you in your ass. Unless you're like, I don't know, you, you know, very rarely are you not, subject to those kind of kinds of constraints either it's because you're too unimportant to matter right you're too expendable or you know disposable to matter because you're at a low tier job or you're like a billionaire you know or like a super wealthy you know you've got your own thing figured out but everybody in between they have to worry about something like that so i don't even know what the argument is here what what is the real life experience that people lack that uh, we would surmise that that might that might hurt you. I don't I don't even comprehend what the counter argument to that would be. Of course that's going to hurt your job prospects. Of course that's going to be a risk. Even if that's not something that that does end up hurting you, is that something that you want floating out there and take a chance on that? Who would want to hire somebody that's a fucking prostitute? Who would want to hire somebody that's a whore? Yeah, I'm going to hire somebody who, when they were 18, was posting nude photos of themselves on OnlyFans for a few bucks. I'm going to hire that person to be a partner in a law firm. I'm going to hire that person to be an accountant or a doctor. Of course, it matters. And, you know, maybe some people are overemphasizing that point or exaggerating, but, I mean, that's absolutely a consideration. Not the most important thing, but it's definitely it's definitely there. That I think you can do morally is judging someone about what they did previously and not hiring them even though they're qualified for the job. This is straight out of the playbook of the boomer who's decaying wow. in his lazy boy, who, who wants to tell you, no, nah, that ain't gonna work. You, no one's gonna hire you looking like that. The bone through your nose? <laughs> yeah, forget it. Yeah, the stud going through your tongue? <laughs> no one wants sluts working for them. And the dyed hair? Don't get me started on the dyed hair and the tattoos. No one's gonna hire you looking like that. In my head, there would be uh, so many. Well, and, you know, this just shows it's it's literally the opposite. I don't know what this guy's story is. What is where, what is his background? Has he been a, a YouTuber forever? Let me just go through the bio real quick. Let's see. Has this guy ever even held a real job? I mean, I know I'm not the I'm not the expert in holding a real job. I I held a few jobs, uh, and then I went to college for a year. You know, so. My my experience maybe in the real world stopped when I was like 19 or something. Let's just say, for the sake of example. Uh, but let's see what what the background is here. It looks like he's been a YouTuber his whole life, since 2015. So, is that true? I don't know his background well enough to say definitively, but. This is what happens when you work on YouTube for uh, your whole life. This is what happens when, maybe not your whole life, but this is what happens when you work on YouTube for 10 years and you don't actually, well, if, if he uh, has been doing YouTube most of his life, then he probably is operating as an employee. Uh, yeah, those kinds of things absolutely make a difference. And I can tell you, as somebody, I consider myself at this point like an entrepreneur or something. You know, I don't know if I'm exactly an entrepreneur, but I'm definitely not like a wagey and I'm definitely not like strictly a content creator anymore. I mean, there are other components of what I do at this point. And I can tell you as somebody that's looking for partners and looking for potentially people to work for me, because I have people doing different projects and I'm looking at and I don't want to get too specific into what I'm what I'm doing this year. I don't want to, you know, give away a lot of what's happening behind the scenes, but I can tell you that I'm always looking for people, at least for alliances or for partnerships or if people want to work for me. And I can tell you that that absolutely those kinds of things make a difference. And it's not arbitrary. It's not like I'm just being a jerk to say, I, I'm not going to hire you or I don't want to work with you because I don't like the way you look. Or I'm not going to hire you because I'm a prude about naked pictures. It's because those things reflect your character, obviously. You know, you might be a really creative person. I, I don't know, maybe you're really qualified or something. But if you come to me and you've got, uh, you know, gauges or the, you know, nose piercing or you've had pictures on OnlyFans, what does this tell me about your character? 
That shows that you're impulsive, not a long-term thinker. It also shows that, I mean, we all know full well that in order to be the face, to represent something, you can't be looking like that. If you're in sales or if you're in relations or anything like that, if you're supposed to be the public face of an organization, maybe it doesn't matter if you're just like a programmer. Maybe it doesn't matter if you're just working in the back or something. But in, in a lot of jobs, you're the representative of a team or of a company or of a brand or something. And what kind of representative do you have if it's somebody that is looking like some kind of freak? Somebody that is has a look that is offensive to other people. You have to think about that if you want to get anywhere in life. That, you know, your what you wear and how you dress and everything is, is not just a matter of self-expression. It's also, it's also a vehicle to get around in the world. How you look matters. And I'm sorry, but your, your body is not just a canvas to paint like, you know, tattoos and piercings and tell your life story. You have to get along in the world. And, you know, you want to find a, you want to find a spouse and you want to find a job and you want to be a member of the community. And a lot of those things don't are not conducive to that. It shows that you're not thinking about those things. That's what it shows at the end of the day. It shows that you're not thinking. The, all, all of these bad decisions, vices, crimes, past wrongdoings, why would you pick somebody who, like, is not thinking about their future clearly, is only thinking the present or only thinking about themselves or the immediate, uh, you know, whatever they want in that moment, as opposed to somebody who has worked hard, is presentable, all the rest, right? I mean, that's what it comes down to. If you got two candidates for a job and one person looks normal, is a great representative, right, sociable, groupable, worked hard all their lives, and then you've got some prostitute with gauges in their ears, it's like, well, it's a no-brainer. That's, that's not being a boomer or a jerk. I, I don't know if somebody like this would even know anything about that. Doing content creation, maybe you don't have to think about these kinds of things. But it's just obvious. Optics, right? Optics, it matters. And that's that's maybe the the smallest argument, but you know, just so much of this video is just just ignorant, just some ignorant kid spouting off. He's guy's ten years older than me, but the things I'm hearing, it's just like it betrays ignorance, you know. And obviously, the worst part about pornography is not that it's going to hurt your job prospects. I mean, that that's a big part of it, but it's moral. It's uh, it's about your dignity. It's it's these kinds of things. But I mean, if he's going to argue that. Oh, like it's it's morally wrong that you would be judged for your past decisions. That's all you have is your past decisions. That's all you have as a record is what you do. If I'm going to hire somebody, and and I've had I've had to think about these kinds of things because I am going to have to bring people on a team and have people work on things. And what do you think about? How do I know that somebody's going to be a reliable worker? How do I know that somebody's going to be a good team member? All I can judge them on because I have to evaluate who's going to bring value. If I'm going to make a financial and a time investment in somebody, I have to know, I have to have some idea of how reliable they'll be at their job and if they're going to get along and, and if they're going to be a good fit. And the only way that you know that is their past decisions. It's their qualifications, whether that's education or work experience. And their references, if somebody can recommend them. If a, if a really good friend of mine says, this guy's awesome, based on their past interactions or whatever, then I say, that means that is worth a lot to me, you know? This is just like common sense stuff. I'm not, I'm not acting like I'm like, you know, tycoon over here, America first tycoon or anything, but this is just obvious. Anybody who's in a position where you're running a business or running some kind of team or running any kind of organization, this stuff is just common sense it's just the most simple straightforward thing only a youtuber could say that oh it doesn't matter what you look like or what you do what the fuck does matter then what is qualified then i don't care if you might like deep down be really good at what you do if you can't do it on time if you can't do it with other people if you can't do it in a way that's presentable you know 80 percent of life is things like that it's the presentation it's the approach a very very small percentage of life is actually the talent and that's an important part that is a necessary component is you know actually getting things done and the know-how and all that but so so much of living life is not about any of that it's about showing up and it's about these social type things we're social creatures we live in a social world we live in society right and that that is required that's maybe the bigger component anyway i know that might sound like a boomer but it's so true are you looking like that
in my head, there would be uh, so many other things to do and make money before stooping to this point. I find it very fascinating that uh, commentary YouTuber, who's known for criticizing others, much like me, would be willing to take the position that sex work is beneath them. Uh, that they aren't on the same level as sex work. That's fascinating. I find it really interesting that that is the, uh, that's the position you want to take. That, I think that'll age quite nicely. You can add extra money as well, which, I mean, I don't know if it's really needed in that household, considering the dude will pull like 3 million views off of reviewing peanuts, but, um, okay. Sounds like someone's a little- Yeah, uh, it is stooping to that. Sex, sex work is contemptible. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, there's kind of like moral relativism about this stuff. How can anybody say that commentating or commenting on uh, like YouTube drama is lower than selling your body? Do you know how undignified and gross it is to sell your body? How sick is that? How is that any that is that is hardly better than being a full blown prostitute? And think about how sick that is to be a prostitute. You know, if, especially if you're a woman, you are. Uh, your genitals, which is maybe the most intimate, private part about you, you're going to sell that for, what, $100? You know, think about what a prostitute does. A woman lets a man penetrate, I mean, penetrate her. I don't want to get too graphic. I don't like to get graphic, and I don't want to be too scatological here, but your your body is literally penetrated. I mean, how, how could you get into more of a violation than that? You've got all these, like, left-wing people out there who are like, you know, working in a factory is undignified. I'm like a wage slave. And then they, like, have people pay them to penetrate their body and, like, touch them and kiss them. And how fucking sick is that? And, you know, just to give you an idea of, of the category that we're talking about here, to sell something that is intimate and personal and, uh, you know, I guess OnlyFans is not, I mean, that's not the same as... Uh, you know, having sex with somebody, but it's right up there. I mean, it's in the same category. And and think about strangers. Think about strangers, people with bad intentions, people you don't even know, and they are looking at your most private, your most private areas, right? And they're viewing you in such a personal and intimate setting for what ten bucks? I don't I don't know how much it costs. Ten bucks, fifteen bucks, maybe that's more expensive because she's like famous or whatever. But you're willing to sell your body to the highest bidder. You're going to put a price tag on your body. And and worse if you're in a relationship, obviously. I mean, it's bad enough, but you know, then you're in a relationship. And you're selling off what should be something that is intimately shared between you and your your uh, you know spouse or your partner. Should be your spouse. You know, shouldn't be doing that when you're not married yet. But you know what I'm saying. Even if you're even if you're not religious and you do that kind of thing with your boyfriend, it's like or your girlfriend. Imagine doing that if you're, you know, if you're the her, and the same thing that your boyfriend is seeing, you're showing that then to the world for ten bucks. And sometimes it's even more lewd or more whatever, right? If she's trying to jack up the price or something, putting a price tag on that. I just can't imagine commodifying your own body like that. Everybody should have a limit. You understand that if you are that desperate for money, you are a slave. There's no, there's no way around that. You're trading your body for like uh, products, <laughs> trading your body for consumer goods. I'm trading my dignity as a human being, and as opposed to just like flesh, as opposed to something that people jerk off to for like, uh, you know, makeup. <laughs> I'm gonna trade that for shampoo and uh, groceries. I have no respect. I have no respect for people that do that. How can anybody? You're like an animal at that point. You know? Or uh, you're like an object. You've objectified yourself. You've commodified and objectified yourself. And how could anybody be okay with that? Who would want to marry somebody like that? And <laughs> that's why the war has to be on the simps, because we cannot reward this behavior or sweep it under the rug. You know, I think about my life. And I've been celibate all my life, and I've worked my ass off to build something, and I've, I've, you know, built up a reputation and built up some resources. 
I'm not gonna marry somebody who's a fucking whore. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste my time on somebody who did not take it as seriously as I took it seriously. Why would I do that? You know, it's like that Sam Hyde sketch, The Wall Show. And, uh, you know, you got all these women who are 30 years old and they're skanks. And they're like, I want a man who's a lawyer and maybe a doctor and makes a lot of money and is tall and fit and drives a nice car and responsible and he takes care of business. And the, uh, what's his name, comes on. And he goes, you know, look, I, I worked my ass off in law school and I got a nice job and, you know, maybe one of these ladies can go back to school and, you know, do really well. And in 10 years, they can find somebody like me, you know, but that's that's the evaluation. Nobody wants to be with somebody like that. No, who who would want to enter into a relationship where it's not intimate and personal and exclusive? That's what it's about at the end of the day is exclusivity. You know, it's about the cow and getting the milk for free, right? You know, we want a home. We want we want to own things. I want my home. I want my TV, my own bed, and I want my own wife. Right? And who would want everything to be public? And you don't own anything, and your neighbor can get it as just as good as you can. It's in the Ten Commandments. You know, aside from all these arguments I'm making based on just sort of like common sense, it's also in the Ten Commandments about coveting your neighbor's wife. Hello? So. A little bit salty. You do realize that if your partner is making a lot of money and is very wealthy, that doesn't automatically make you feel fulfilled in the relationship or uh, feel like you're contributing enough. Because she based needs to on your be fulfilled argument, by then selling her body. I guess Jeff Bezos' son just should never work at McDonald's. There's enough money in the family. I think there's enough money in that household. No reason Philip Bezos needs to go on OnlyFans doesn't need to lower himself to that yeah. standard. Yeah. The world would be a much better place if people like Philip Bezos, I don't know if that's his son's actual name, but if Philip Bezos did OnlyFans, that would be a perfectly fine thing to do. I think what I've learned from this experience- That's, it's literally, but what he said was literally true. Rich people don't need to do things like that. They don't need to. No, who would want to do that? Who would want to sell their body like that? I don't understand. What does this guy think OnlyFans is? What does he think that entails? Does he think that's like glamorous? I don't understand. Does he even know what he's talking about? Does he think that OnlyFans is like Club Penguin or something? I can't imagine there's anything pleasant about sex work. Do you think that the kind of people that sign up for OnlyFans are like really handsome, like successful people? You know, when, when people are signing up to watch his girlfriend's nudes, are those like winners? I think if you're a winner, you would probably go out and like find a girlfriend. If you're a winner, you're probably not jerking off, frankly. You're not jerking off. Either you're religious and you're a winner and you're celibate and you get married and have a lot of kids, or you're a winner and you're not religious, and you know what I mean in a social context, and you have, you know, you you have your pick at women. I don't endorse that behavior, but you know, if you are a, a worthwhile, well, <laughs> in a secular sense, if you're somebody that's really has a high sexual marketplace value, you're having sex with women. You're not, you know, jerking off to other people's girlfriends online, right? That's probably generally true. Probably what you see on OnlyFans is a lot of like old guys, creeps, foreigners, you know, the Bob and Vagine type crowd, right? And maybe like kids, <laughs> teenagers, like uh, and I, I don't want to be, you know, offensive, but you, you know these kinds of types. That's probably who's watching this. W why would anybody do that if they didn't want the money? Nobody does that for a sense of fulfillment. There's nothing fulfilling about... Have you ever seen that movie Requiem for a Dream? Nobody's doing that kind of debasing, gross, violating act. And then they, like, smile and they say, Wow, I did a great job today. I'm sure they probably feel like shit. I, I'm sure they probably feel used and, like, dirty... And the only people that could do that are people that are experiencing trauma, you know, that experience some kind of trauma with their parents or during socialization. But nobody's doing that and saying, woohoo, I'm, just, you know, I'm selling my body, you know. And that's the difference between the rich and the poor is the, the poor, nobody likes to work, okay? Nobody wakes up, well, I mean, some people like to do what they do, but nobody likes to work as a Walmart greeter. Nobody likes to work as a UPS uh, truck unloader. I'm really passionate about unloading trucks. No, you're not. You need to do that because you want to eat. When you're rich, 
you eat no matter what. You eat and you could do whatever you want no matter what. And you don't have to. I mean, obviously, right? You don't have to sell yourself. <laughs> so he's saying, well, well, because, you know, Philip Bezos is rich. Does that mean he's not going to stoop to that level? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's an immense amount of power in that. That's why there is resentment towards the rich. Because the poor scrimp and save and work and they do a lot of things that are undignified in different ways, right? They do a lot of them. They're proud and whatever. And they have to cut corners and use coupons and things like that so that they can eat and they can get ahead. And rich people simply don't need, they don't need to do anything. So they, they do what they want. And maybe they take up a job if they think it's fun, but then they don't need to do that, right? So yeah, that's exactly how it works. Does, what is wrong with the, I think it's like these uh, YouTubers that make too much money. Maybe they just forget how it works. Somebody like this makes too much money. I don't think he understands. He's forgotten what it's like to live in the real world where, you know, I can't I can't fathom how you could have this mentality that like, yeah, everybody's just choosing. If, if I had to work at UPS for the rest of my life, that would be like my choice because I'm dignified. And if I had a lot of money, I'd still, seriously, what, what's wrong with you? If you're rich, you manage money. You manage, you know, your portfolio. You do things that you like. You take on projects for fun, hobbies, things like that. You go to school if you want, right? Anyway. Experiences. Let's when you're on, speaking to a large group of people and uh, there's some dudes in the back sh shouting out their opinions like, I fucking hate thoughts. I hate whores. Women who sell their body online fucking suck. That's the worst. Instead of ignoring that, and just moving on with my lecture, it might be a better idea to point those people out and say, yeah, I actually don't agree with that shitty opinion. Um, because it, it seems like me just ignoring it has led to uh, like a cultivation of a bunch of retards. That pretty much wraps up this video. I love my girlfriend and I'm totally fine with dudes jacking off to pictures of her on the internet. Doesn't affect me one way or the other. If you are upset by me admitting this, then uh, I suggest you go idolize someone else. Someone who isn't a simp or a cuck. Someone who maybe just gives shitty opinions instead. Yeah, dude, so funny. What a cope. Yeah, that's just gross. This is what people do for their for their women, though. They they destroy them. Any man should say, you know, of course. Do you think that a, a super rich man or a super Chad guy has his girlfriend whoring around online? Do you think anybody does that? Of course not. It's all about... What it all comes down to is like desperation. It really all does come down to economy in, in a certain sense. Not like the economy, like the GDP, like economy. The idea that a uh, in, in this polyamorous society, maybe somebody like this knows that he doesn't have a lot of options for a girlfriend, so he has to put up with this, right? But somebody who has a higher sexual marketplace value because they have a lot more options, they have abundance, they can pick and choose, they can discriminate. And that's kind of the problem. <laughs> it's, we've cultivated this society of very loose and transient sexual and romantic relationships. And it's created dynamics like this where women are empowered and uh, a very small group of men are empowered. And, and I'm using that term in a light way, in a sort of vernacular way. And, and all these other men are left out to dry, basically. And that creates this dynamic. Because if somebody like this is like, no, I'm not okay with that. I mean, she'll probably just leave, right? And uh, then what is he going to do? Find some fat girl? <laughs> Find some fat, ugly girl? But that's the problem. It's created the situation where women kind of hold all the cards here. And that's the biggest pill is the female question, the female pill. That's the biggest part of it. Feminism has done more damage than anything else. And not just the voting, not just the working... Not the blue-haired college students. All of it. All of female empowerment was a mistake. 
Because women are empowered and this is what they do. They take and they take and they take from desperate men, right? Take their money, take their time, take their resources, you know, like a succubus. They suck them dry. They get away with what they want because they know that they can. That's at the end of the day how it goes. If we were in a different time, if somebody, if a girl did this, she would just be like ostracized. <laughs> if any girl did this, she would be ostracized. Oh, that girl, she's a whore. Nobody's going to... Oh, you're with the whore, really? You know? And there was a social stigma and religious order that kept everybody in line. One woman, one man, and you got to get tied. You got to gotta tie the knot in order to have sex. And that ensures that everybody's going to have their... Everybody's going to have a woman. Every woman's going to have a man. And instead, what you get is this... This neo... It's essentially, that's the consequence of neoliberalism, what it is is a marketplace of sex. It shouldn't be a marketplace. Or if it is, it shouldn't be a free marketplace where it's, oh, you know, I can, it's like you're just shopping around at the mall or something. But this is what we've created. We've created weaker men and we've created these insane women. That's why they, we've all got to be brought back under the, uh, the confines, the system of marriage. Some people think that it's uh, limiting or restrictive, but restrictions are good, actually. The boomers, it's so funny, brings up the boomers. The boomers are the ones that destroyed the institution of marriage because they said it was too restrictive. Well, now our generation is looking at no restrictions. How do we like it? Do we like no restrictions on women's sexuality? Is that something that makes you feel good at night when you talk to your girlfriend knowing that she has five bodies? Is that something that, that you like? Does that ease your mind? Does that bring you comfort? Are you happy about that? Knowing that you know, you roll a you roll a dice, and maybe there's a uh, you know, one side of that dice is the chance that your girlfriend doesn't have three or four or five bodies, and she hasn't been with other people and been intimate and done things and so on. Is that something you like? Is that something that's good for men? And by the way, that's not the feeling just of like so-called incels. That's the kind of anxiety and discomfort that every man feels, or every man you know must feel in some way. Is that good for them? And also, is that good for women even? Women to have this emotional detachment, almost a complete disassociation. You know, having these sexual bonds and emotional bonds and just making and breaking them quickly and frequently. I'm sure that's really healthy psychologically for everybody. Getting invested you know, burying your soul, getting intimate, and then ripped away. <laughs> and then somebody else, and then ripped away, and then somebody else. And that person's been broken and put back together a hundred times. It's terrible. <coughs> and people think I'm like radical on this topic. <coughs> Went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> uh, mm. People think I'm like a radical. Uh. <laughs> mm. Peanut check? Mm. These peanuts are making my throat dry. I got to take a sip real quick. Okay. People think <laughs> that I'm a radical on this subject. But it requires radical change. The system we're living in is unsustainable. It's unacceptable. It's bad. We have a bad system. Well, how do you change a bad system? Going from a bad system to a good system is radical. Right? Obviously. To go from bad to good is a dramatic change. But that's, what's, that's that is what is required. But people don't want to do what's necessary. They want to have their cake and eat it too. Well, I want to get off. <laughs> well, I want to get laid. But I also feel like hollow and empty and alone. <laughs> well, I don't want to give up porn. And I don't want to give up casual sex. Uh, but I do feel completely hollow and alone and I want a family, and I want a loving relationship. <laughs> and women are the same way. Well, I do want to get fucked every weekend. And I, I do want to, 
you know, I, I do want to party with my girlfriends and, you know, blow guys and stuff like that. But I also want a man who has his stuff together and loves me and brings me flowers and is confident and educated and takes care of me and loves me. Okay, so nobody's happy. <laughs> nobody's happy with the situation. The women are not happy. The men are not happy. Everybody's miserable. Nobody, but everybody's making this trade-off because they're putting a premium on now. That is what it comes down to, is they are discounting the future, right? Or rather, they're selling the, they're, what, what the, what am I trying to say? You don't understand what I'm trying to say. Time horizon is how this works. Because they're making a trade-off based on what they want now. In other words, it's maybe they're not deliberately and thoughtfully making this trade-off, but they're making the trade-off nonetheless. They're trading their celibacy, their chance at a fulfilling marriage in natural roles and so on for immediate sexual gratification. And people are making that trade-off largely because of the devil, largely because of pornography and temptation and things like that. That's what the devil relies on. The devil puts the wool over your eyes and soothes you and tempts you and so on so that you make these bad decisions like this. That's the whole point. You have to be smart enough to resist that. That's where faith comes in. You know? Because if you laid it out to most people, you know, if you told everybody when they're 10 years old, well, do you want a loving wife and kids and a partner until the end of time and sanctioned by God and so on? Or do you want to be miserable and in bars when you're 30 looking for skanks that have, you know, that have been with a bunch of people and she's never really going to love you and she might divorce you and blah, blah, blah. Everybody would say the former. But then the devil whispers in your ear and says, oh, hey, that, that feels pretty good, huh? I think that looks nice. That looks nice. Oh, look at this. Look at this. It's in advertisements. It's in the movies. It's on TV. It's on the Internet. Look at her. Look at this one. Look at that. It's no big deal. You're not a man unless you lose your virginity. You're not a man unless you have sex with a lot of girls. You're not pretty unless you have sex with a lot of guys, right? And this is the this is the trap that we're all in. That's what happens. So anyway, that's I dubs. What else what else is there to watch? Is there anything else to watch on this? Is there anything else that's like uh this is the only video I've seen so far about I love this Turtle Beats headset that turns off if you don't, like, have sound in it for, like, three minutes. And you can't turn that feature off. Really great feature.